Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. We have tonight more news on the House impeachment inquiry, and we've got breaking news on Mitt Romney's retirement from the Senate. But let me first begin with a new failure of Bidenomics. Today's August CPI report shows that inflation has accelerated for the second consecutive month in August, with the largest monthly increase in a year. The CPI jumped 0.6%, which is an annualized rate of 7.8%. Now, actually, the 12-month change has gone from a low of 3% to 3.2%, and now 3.7%. Of course, this is still way below the 9.1% peak of last year. I get that. But the concern is that the numbers are now going in the wrong direction. Noteworthy is the fact that during Joe Bidenomics term, so far the level of the CPI has increased a whopping 17%. But if that weren't bad enough, grocery prices up 20%, electricity up 26%, gasoline up 62 percent and throw in the 30-year mortgage rate which started at 2.65 percent and is now 7.75 percent just in case you were thinking about buying a new home and this gets to the key issue of declining affordability during the bidenomics years with the cumulative inflation hike new census bureau numbers show that last year 2022 Real household median income fell 2.3%. That is the worst since the Obama-Biden days of 2010. Real family household income dropped 2.9%, almost 3%. And the poverty rate is all the way up to 11.5%, holding last year's level. That's 37.9 million people in poverty. Hat tip on that one to Breitbart's John Carney. Now, look at during the Trump years, the pre-pandemic 2019 poverty rate had fallen to 10.5 percent and 34 million people, just saying. And additionally, real median income, which rose over $6,000 pre-pandemic during the Trump years, has fallen roughly $4,000 during the Biden years. Again, this is another lack of affordability. Now, folks are working, but their real incomes are falling. Work harder, buy less. This is the failure of Bidenomics. Then, of course, one definition of Bidenomics is the goal of destroying fossil fuels, including gas-powered cars. So while OPEC Plus, which includes Iran, Venezuela, Russia, Saudis, while they extend their production cuts, Bidenomics has frozen drilling in large parts of Alaska and the Gulf of Mexico. The rig count is way down. In other words, future production cuts from Biden match the current production cuts of our OPEC adversaries. So world oil prices now back to $92 a barrel, and AAA national gasoline is back to $3.85. Now, when Joe Bidenomics was inaugurated, world oil prices were $54 a barrel. And gasoline was $2.39. You do the math. This is another loss of household affordability. And you add it all up, and Bidenomics has about a 35% approval rating today in most of the polls. So I'll just say, save America. Retire Joe Bidenomics.